Hi, what's up, y'all? What's poppin'? What's cracking? It's D. Boss react to this vid by Honest. It's titled "The TikTokification of NLE Chopper." This is an interesting term. I've never heard it before. Uh, but yeah, I have you know peeped his his new image. Um, he's making some very interesting fashion choices, and uh, yeah, he's doing and saying a lot of odd things. He said he was coming out recently on Twitter. I don't know what's happening with him, but sure, let, let's see what's going on with Watch. Inali Chapa has gone through a pretty drastic transformation in his career that is hard not to take notice of. For those of you that don't know, Inali Chapa burst out into the scene in 2018 at the young age of 16, and his image and music was a stark contrast to what it is now yes. in more than a normal maturation way. It was really in 2019 when he began his Shot of Flow series that he rose to viral prominence. It gained him both critical and commercial success. His music was often darker, discussed themes of street life, as well as the party life. I remember him receiving a lot of comparisons Kip. to NBA Youngboy, who his rise seemed to mirror in many ways. And they both have pretty That's what makes it even more uh, aggressive rapping styles. Transformation. He continued leaning into this trajectory with hit songs like Go Stupid alongside Polo G and Welcome Down with Roddy Rich. But around 2020, there seemed to be a noticeable switch in the brand of Inelie Chapa. He went through this short-lived phase where he adopted a peace, love, happiness, and Very earth spiritual. feel, mm -hmm. where he promoted veganism, holistic approaches, and distanced himself from his more hard-pressed themes of street life and darkness. This coincided with an album title from Dark to Light. He often did meditations and made outrageous claims, like how he could control the earth and wind. He stated how his herbs helped heal cancer. He also shared conspiratorial right. views towards the pandemic and masks. This phase in his career ultimately felt like an empty publicity stunt or an attempt to troll. His current image did a really successful job at making people forget this entire era of his career even existed. I even forgot about it, but I remember seeing it all over social media. This phase did not last long. In his 2022 album, Me Vs. Me, that had features from Young Thug, Polo G, G Herbal, and Moneybag Yo, was pretty much a return to form to his original, more hardcore focus style. I do think it's important to mention that while the production was a bit inconsistent, his talent was prevalent on his projects up until this point. However, that would seem to go to the wayside, as he would seem to embrace an image that has more in common with a camp pop star than an around-the-way rapper. The biggest problem being that he seemed to sacrifice quite a lot of his artistic merit in the process of honing in on his talent in favor of a gimmicky TikTokify rebrand. Mm. This also coincided with his rise as a sex symbol. I would say his rebrand really caught wind when he released Let Me Out in 2022. He walked fellow female rappers Suki Hana and Sexy Red by their hair, and relished in provocative head-turning subject matters. I don't think this song is bad. It's actually kind of subversive for a modern hip-hop song. So many sex songs in hip-hop tend to solely reinforce male dominance, and while Inali Chapa also does that in this song, he also shines light on acts that embrace his submissive side, like telling his lover to spit in his face, and rip off his shirt. It's definitely a song dependent on shock factor. There's not anything interesting going on musically, but once again, it's not a bad song, but it certainly marked a new beginning for him. I'd say another song that marked his ascension into TikTokification is It's Getting Hot, a song that is built on the Nelly classic Hot In Here. Gonna look it's like one it. of what feels like hundreds of uninspired samples or interpolations built on familiar classic songs that everyone knows and loves, where the artist interpolating the song just says the most outlandish or stupid things over the beat in order to go viral. It sounds so cheap and poorly made. The thing I hate about these type of songs is that they are deceptive. They try to fool people into thinking they like them or by concealing their laziness by heavily utilizing a well-loved song mm. pretty much verbatim. Without... I just talked about this. I just reacted to uh, Katy Perry on my Patreon. Check it out if you're interested. Um, her sample that she did... Uh, and I don't feel like it was lazy at all, but I just, I don't like when um, people use samples and it's like a complete, like, copy-paste ripoff. I don't like that. I have not heard this song, to be honest, so I can't say. But it's like, make it into your own. Don't just lean heavily on the, the classic song and try to, you know, get some shine based off of that, their success. Like, you gotta create your own lane. A really good example of like really making a sample um, your own is uh, Burna Boy's Last Last. Like that was such a good sample of Tony Braxton's song. Uh, but yeah, a lot of artists 
when they use samples, they kind of just copy paste and it does feel lazy. Being transformative to the original production. There is no need for this. It's an empty vanity project. We then have Slut Me Out 2, which is a flamboyant dance pop sex anthem. It follows up the original Slut Me Out, but has some more interesting things going on musically, with a hook that says, if I was a bad bitch, I'd want to fuck me too. Oh. It's inventive in ways, but it's one of those songs pandering very hard towards virality. I can't help but to think of Lil Nas X and his approach to artistry when hearing this song. And I feel like Inna Lee has kind of meshed the best of both worlds. He kind of adopted that over-the-top flamboyance that Lil Nas X took on, but he also has the charismatic heartthrob angle that Jack Harlow took on. I really do believe WAP set off a new precedent of virality in the age of TikTok. Extremely outlandish or funny subject matter, crazy and colorful visuals, and usually a viral that TikTok dance visual. to go along with it. Following closely behind WAP came Montero Call Me By Your Name, which I view as a gay cartoonist extension of WAP. And then we have the lesser, whether that be in song form, rollout, or subject matter, which is Unholy by Sam Smith and Cam Petras, and Paint the Town Red by Doja Cat which both adopted religious imagery, but for lack of better words, just sounded like pedestrian shopping mall music or a song you hear in a kid's like Halloween movie. I think Inali Chapa kind of soaked up some of that juice from this post-WAP, post-Montero pop landscape and applied it to his artistry. I don't think there's anything wrong with him going in a popular sex forward direction, but maybe he can find a balance that still shows his talents as a rapper. It just feels very novelty driven, unlike the music that it's he began with. Game. I can't help but to think of a lot of other new artists who have kind of adopted this TikTok formula, where it's just quotables and vibes. Obviously there's Ice Spice, but it's different in this case because Inali Chapa is actually talented. We also have artists like Quo The Ray and Lotto. Lotto is seemingly on a path to finding her balance though. No one wants to play the long game anymore and really develop and hone in on their craft. They want instant gratification mm. and water themselves down. But I mean, at the same time, can we really blame them? The music industry has turned to shit and they have to get paid. But the thing is, I don't think they have to turn into a caricature of themselves to become more wide appealing and to grow in visibility. I kind of view Inali as like an all around personality now instead of just an artist. He kind of has like this modern day flavor flav shtick going on. Something positive has come out of this new era of Inali Chapa. Unfortunately, it's not his music thus far. <laughs> But he's kind of operating as a bridge of acceptance when it comes to hip hop and gay people, which is so necessary. I feel like he's trying to pander though. It don't feel genuine. We've had gay rappers and bi rappers ascend in the charts over the past decade, but unfortunately, LGBT people are still rolled out in greater conversations. Hip hop is a genre that is strongly ingrained in machismo and male dominance, and in the eyes of many men, being attracted to another man is the least manly thing you can do. The Baby's Rolling Loud set showed us that even if gay people are supporting your music in hip hop, they are susceptible to being ostracized and shamed. Inali Chapa has taken on a completely different approach, acknowledging the impact the LGBT community has had on the success of his recent music and proudly proclaiming his support and willingness and eagerness to perform for them. Now, I don't think people should receive praise for not being homophobic and respecting their fan base, that's human decency. But I do think it's important to highlight the importance of a heterosexual rapper with NLE's visibility taking on this route, and hopefully it prompts change. But the thing is, even when he is doing good, he can't help but to let out those TikTok hungry ways of Yeah, this, this makes it feel gimmicky, and this makes me feel like he's pandering, because now you're playing games. I'm coming out, and it's like, out with a new song like now you you're doing too much this doesn't feel like you're trying to be a real ally it seems like you're trying to do whatever you can for attention is that a little pump bro what the fuck see no <laughs> and now you teaming up with the a cloud demon is that a little pump am i tripping i don't trust it i don't trust what he's doing i don't feel like oh this is a good thing at least he's no because it doesn't feel it, it doesn't feel authentic wow Shortly after sending out a that's video pump, I know to it's his not LGBT it. fan base and embracing them, he made a tweet that said he was coming out. And it sat there for a while and obviously gained a lot of attention. Then he followed it up by promoting his music, which is so corny. Mm. But yeah, the transformation of Inali Chapa is interesting and so drastic. 
Yeah, I feel like he's trying to do whatever he can for attention. Maybe he saw that the route that he was going down, it wasn't uh, as successful anymore. And he wasn't making money from it like that. So he's just trying to try whatever. So it just... It, it reeks of desperation more than anything, in my opinion, respectfully. But, um, yeah, I'm not into it. <laughs> I've never been into his music, though. So, I mean, I won't be tuning in now, just like I wasn't tuning in back then. But, yeah, hopefully it works out for him, I guess. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know in other videos you've been watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!